Yeah. Welcome to the Hollywood Bet Scottsville Race Meet. And of course, looking forward to the Derby and Oak Scottsville Racing and uh, also racing taking place at Turfentine on Sunday. I'm not going to be on it. Uh, the guys, unfortunately, uh, um, will have to do it on their own as they always do in terms of finding the tips. The COVID and pneumonia just don't go together. So we're out for another week, but we're batting away day by day. But you boys were in good form last weekend, so I'm very happy with you boys. Well done. That four to one, I think, Darren, that uh, that double landed last uh, last yeah, week. Yeah, around four to one, Cosmic Highway and Rainbow Bridge are two best bets on the card. So that was a good one. Okay, well that's brilliant. That's what you need uh, at the end of the day. Um, in terms of the weekend, do does it look like a, a, a tough card, or how, how do you see it? No, it looks catchable. Um, we try every weekend. Um, I think we'll have a good weekend once again. Sunday doesn't look too difficult. It's pretty straightforward to pick six and that, so we'll be trying. Happy with those changes there, uh, Darren, Daryl? Yes, 100%, four scratchings. Are those the four scratchings for Scottsville, okay? Yeah. Um, then just very quickly, a quick look, if we may, at uh, uh, the weather out Maritzburg Way and see what um, that looks like for uh, you guys as well. Any information that uh, we need to go into on that screen? Yeah, um, they've obviously had some uh, some irrigation put down because uh, the penetrometer is 23 on the stand side track and on the inside track it's 24. So there is some giving the going and I'm sure the horses will appreciate that. Okay, so that's for Hollywood Bet Scottsville on uh, Saturday. Let's get straight into the market now and uh, just take a look at uh, the betting. Unfortunately, I couldn't get uh, into the interbet betting, so... I've got some of the world sports betting markets up for you guys, starting with the opening leg of uh, the pick six. I'll go straight to you, Daryl, first, with the first leg of the pick six. Uh, difficult first leg, or can we get away with one or two here? Uh, it's a Phillies MS handicap, um, so it's field. always tricky. B. Moodley always no, says field. Remember what to... saying? Don't forget B. Moodley saying Phillies and MES handicaps, eh? I wish we could just put field every leg now because then we can't miss. But uh, the fact of the matter is we have to try and narrow it down as, as best we can. Um, I see the favorite is uh, number two of your different face. Now she's having her first thoughts in the country. I think she raced for Simon and Ed Crisper in the UK and she won her race at Linkfield over a thousand meters. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's a all weather surface, fairly quick. And it, Justin Snate's comments in the winning form is speedy type, good gallops, each way chance. Mm -hmm. So you just have to take that with the, with the best intentions possible and uh, respect the chances of yeah. But in the first leg of the pick six, I'm siding with two roughies, and one of them happens to be my value bet on the day. Number seven, traveling light. Now, just look, have a look at her rating. She's come down from a 99 to an 82. And I really believe she's going to be very competitive off that mark. One just has to go back to a penultimate start where she gave the decent up-and-coming sprinter weight in open company. And she wasn't disgraced at all. Now, now I think back up the straight at Scottsville, I think she represents value in the race. And I also like the look of number eight, the IHE. She's campaigned, campaigned fairly well here at Scottsville. She's also going to appreciate the drop-in trip, and her ratings also come down slightly, uh, slightly. So for me, the two value horses in the race, number seven, Traveling Light, and number eight, Daiichi. Okay, seven, eight, watch those. Um, Darren, what do you know about, um, about the source different face? Um, well, she raced in the UK. Um, I saw one of her runs at Chester. She's, she's very speedy, but she doesn't find too much the final 100 meters. I don't think she sees much more than 1,000 meters. So the 1,100 meters in the sticky going, um, it all depends on if she can get a lead on the field or how she's going to race. But when she did try the 1,200 once, she faded out of contention. And she's had a long layoff. So it'll be interesting to see. But I agree with Daryl. Uh, Travelling light is the horse to beat and the value in the race. Her merit ratings tumbled. And back to the 1,100-meter trip, I think she's really the horse to beat. 
Um, for the placings, of course, like Big Sky Country can get involved. Suarez competitive. But for me, traveling light is the value. You can get around 18 to 10, 2 to 1 a place. Okay. Excellent. So we'll watch out for that. That's the opening leg of the pick six. Go to the first leg of the jackpot. Yeah. Stay with you, Darren. What do you like? I like Shanty Man. Um, he had quite a long layoff from August to March, and he came back with a cracking win. Uh, he followed it up in the computer form sprint four and three quarter length back, and that was his second run after a long rest. So I think he's going to tighten up a lot from that run. And I think he is just about best weighted in the race, if I'm not mistaken. So Shanty Man for me, over the Philly Vinici, not much separating in the, them in the computer form sprint. She's a very good filly on her day. And then for the minor placings, um, there's a horse called uh, Speed Point, who's been running over the 11 and 1200 meters lately. I don't think he sees more than 1000 meters, so he could get into the back of quartet. Okay, Daryl, your side? Yeah, Clyde, plenty of pace in this race. Uh, you've got the likes of Great Sharker, Valerian King, and Tracers, who only know one style of running, and that's Halter Skelter. So the pace is going to be on. And um, with Gr Great Sharker and Valerian King drawn towards the inside, I think the race is going to be set up for the likes of Shanty Man. Uh, he really performs well at this track. And I like the fact that the sting is out the ground for him because he, he, he'll be moving more um, uh, better on this occasion. I think um, he has had his, his problems in the past. So I like the look of Shanty Man, but I won't discount the Cape Raid over here in Constable. Um, he's a fairly likely raised four-year-old son of Chuppy, and he could possibly have more improvement to come. So I do believe those are the two that will fight it out um, with Shanty Man being my narrow first pick. The first two choices, just give me the numbers. Uh, far from three. Far from three are your top two in the race. Okay, that's the first leg of the pot. Let's go to the sixth race now. Um, and stay with you, Daryl, for the moment. And uh, Alec Laird's got some horses out there, Hollywood Bet, Scottsville Way, and um, Pash um, Parmesan's Pride being one of them a favourite at 19 to 10 to win. How do you, how do you rate the race? Seem to, there seem to be a few decent ones in here. Yeah, there's some decent sorts of year. Uh, very nice uh, race to look forward to. Obviously, Alec Led's travelled down two, two decent staying <laughs> types in, uh, for, the, for the track and ball derby and the track and ball oaks. And in this race, Pamashan is part. He tops the best weighted uh, column over here. I think he's eight pounds best in. A lot of people are question, questioning his current rating of 116. But in saying that, I think the third and the fifth horse, horses um, have subsequently increased their ratings since the, the derby. So I don't think the handicappers are too far off. Even if they've got a few pounds here or there wrong, he still comes into this race well weighted. You have to respect his chances. I like the look of number two, Silver Hosts. I think he needed his first run in the province and there's no doubt he's going to strip fitter um, and he stays extremely well. So you can expect another honest performance from him mm. and then legitimate. Now he, he possesses a, a, a devastating turn of foot and if he's moving well on the day and he's able to reproduce that turn of foot of a distance in which he's trying for the first time, he could be the one that, uh, that blows them away up the straights. Yeah. And another horse you can't discount and uh, leave out your pick six is Chrome Yellow. I know he's held by Silverhurst on the last two occasions, but he's a really a talented stayer. And with, with a small field, he won't be too far back turning for home. And he, he, can, um, he can upset the, fa the more fancied runners of year. I think we've added four in this leg of the, uh, of the pick six. And mm. I do believe we'll get through this leg quite comfortably. Okay. Darren, any other spooks other than those? Uh, Pamashana, Sprite, Silver Host, Legitimate, Chrome, Yellow. Any other spooks in there? Are you, are you comfortable? Uh, not at all. Uh, those are the only ones we're following for the pick six. And uh, I saw the value with Legitimate. Uh, this horse has a mind of his own. Uh, if you go a couple of runs back behind the second wave, he had the race sewn up and then just stuck his toes in and uh, pricked his ears. 
And then behind Komedi Dun, a length and a half, he went with Komedi Dun, and then he also pricked his ears and like wanted to get out of it. So um, if he comes to the track and he's trying, I think he he is the value in the race at six to one over the up and coming top stayer Silver Host. He's done nothing wrong. He's had the one run in Durban. He should tighten up from that. The three year old Pamishana's pride done nothing wrong. Stays all day, and Chrome Yellow you can never ignore. Yeah, that's got to go in whatever you do. Okay, that's the six race. We go to the 2400 and have a look here where Alec Laird, Darren, has got uh, the favourite 15 to 10. Chitengo would, uh, on based on the market, be the stronger of the two, uh, or is that not the case of his, race, of his horses? Yes, I think she's the best bet on the card. She's best weighted. Um, if you go on a line of form in the Aquanaut Stakes, um, smoking hot's nine kilos worse off at the weights for a four length uh, defeat. Um, Chitengo with a merit trading of 109 at level weights, she's really going to take a lot of beating. Uh, her form is a little bit in and out, but on her day, she should win a race of this nature. So we are taking our chances and we're bankering Chitengo. Chitengo. Daryl, you agree, Chitengo? That's the one <laughs> on weights. On ratings, uh, she should win this quite comfortably and convincingly. I think she will. Um, if she's able to give the likes of Don't Look Back in African Adventure weight and a beating, she should have this field stone cold. Um, I like the look of number seven, catch a falling star to chase her home for the exact position. I know she's held by a few on the KRA East Coast form line, but she was in need of her, her first run in KZN. She now strips very fit. She's having a peak run. And one thing about her is she stays, she gets the trip. So I think she'll be the one chasing home Shitengo. And uh, that's my exact to play in the in the KR in the track and ball oaks. Okay. Shitengo, hard to beat then. Apart from um, Daryl's recommended outsider. Eighth race final leg of the jackpot. Darren, I'll come to you now. Darren, is this a field race? Uh, it's very close to a field race. It's very tricky. My narrow first choice is Silva Maria, but she's got to give the field a lot of weight. Um, so it brings other horses like KCL, Integrity, Lady of Latia, Shanty Lane, and even Kavian's Cara with a merit trading drop. She could be competitive, but I would be leaning towards Silva Maria. If you're taking place multiples, I, I, I would be confident that she'll finish in the first three. Yeah, Keegan zamello has got a very nice card. It looks like on Saturday. But yeah, I didn't could 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 have got a hold of him. I'm like I'm liking very much the way he's riding too, Keegan Zamello at the moment. So Darren, um, uh, Daryl, your uh, your take on this final leg of the pot? Yeah, Clyde. There's several in here that finished on top of each other in their last start behind Lady of Latia. Um, so I don't believe there'll be too much separating them once again. Uh, for that reason, I'm leaning towards integrity because she brings a different form line into the race. And since she's uh, joined a new stable in KZN, she hasn't disgraced herself at all. She's actually improved. And in her last start, she ran third behind Top Me Up Polly. Top Me Up Polly came out to run, the next, uh, to run a place in her following start. And I do believe she could have actually gone closer to winning if she just went a little bit harder in the earlier stages. She got caught flat-footed up this up the straight. So I think that form has been uh, fairly well franked in my personal opinion, but it's a Phillies and Mayors handicap. We've thrown in a few and we're looking for the upsets. Okay. Final leg of the pick six is where you want to get to now, the last leg, and I'll stay with you, Daryl, as to how we, how do we wrap up? Can we close narrowly the final leg of the pick six? Yeah, Clyde, uh, we'll get through this leg very comfortably. Uh, we've gone three, we've gone the top three in the betting, and you don't need any more than that. Uh, Parallax, he's, he's been very, very consistent. Three good runs with the blinkers. He's having his first start in KZN. And uh, on his last start, we saw Blackthorn come out to win from that form line. And when in open company and handicap, uh, he wasn't disgraced at all. So the form line is not weak at all. But I like the look of number 14, Victory Twist. I thought that was a cracking effort last time out when he put some distance between himself and the third place runner. And uh, he was closing in hand over fist. So I, I'm, 
I'm not worried about his wide wall at all. I'd like to see him off the fence and not being cramped because he's got a lovely action on him. And once they turn in, in, uh, into the straight, uh, I think he'll, he'll be asked to, to run and uh, get into his stride early. So I'll make him the one to beat. But if you're looking for a real spook for your trifecta and quartet in the, in the last race of the day, don't leave out number one staff sergeant. Just put a line through his last start. Uh, he was pulled out of the race on that occasion. And he finally cracks a draw. And I uh, think with him getting the run of the race, he could certainly make the trifecta and quartet pay if he manages to put the back end of the trifecta. Okay, don't leave the one out at quartet. Um, Darren, is the top three, as Daryl says, are, they, are we secure? Yes, we're secure with the top three. Um, I'm leaning towards Victory Twist. I just believe he's got the come on look about him and he's progressive. His last start, he was unlucky not to win. Um, and he's drawn 14, but that shouldn't be a problem over this sort of trip. So for me, Victory Twist over Parallax, who brings decent Joburg form into the race. And then Broadway, um, last time out was drawn 15 out of 15. I think we're going to see a much better run and he could narrow that margin uh, behind Victory Twist in his last start. Okay, the next meet we're going to look, I know we've got Kenilworth, but the next big meet we're going to look at is Turfentine. Uh, all the betting uh, taking place at Turfentine on Sunday. Here's a look at the changes. Anything uh, untoward there or should be added or are we missing something from those changes, you guys? Turfentine sa sa Sunday? Looks to be the latest update, right? Those are the latest scratchings that I've got on my, from my side as far as Turfentine is concerned. And just in terms of the weather, I managed to get hold of the guys there. It does look like we are going to have a, a fast track, um, I'm told. So you're looking at a penetrometer reading, I think, of around 19 or 20. I see there's a 10 and a half meter spur at the 500 meter mark is the update for Turpentine inside track um, on, on Saturday, on, on Sunday, I beg your pardon. Um, but of course, it's about making the money and let's get through the card and have a look at the, uh, the, the betting, take you, take you through the market quickly. Here's the first leg of the pick six and uh, you guys can have a look at it and, and see what you think as to what we should do. I'll start with you, Darren, um, where the source understated for Sean Terry is the 12 to 10 favorite. Yes, I think they've got the betting uh, correctly here. Understated the horse to beat and then we've thrown in the two, three, and the five, and we're safe to get through the pick six with those numbers. Okay. Daryl, from your side? Yeah, Clyde, none of them going to Hollywood. Uh, we, we just want to get through the first leg. The favorite is the one to beat. He stays all day, but a uh, moderate bunch. Okay, so we want to get the first leg of the pick six. six. That'll be those top four horses. Um, Daryl, what do you make of uh, I'm Al here, the 12 to 10 favourite for the for the Paul Peter uh, stable, Warren Kennedy, banker? Absolutely, Clyde. Um, I love the fact that he's now been gelded. I think you, you'll you come on length. We've seen the second and the fourth place runners frank that form line. And um, if he's any near anywhere near ready, he'll take a power beating. I think you can take a confident exactor with uh, the... The Dory, uh, Dory Sham trained runner, Chief Rafif, he's much better than his last start. And in my opinion, he's the biggest danger to the favourites. 107. And you're up, you're up, take on that, Darren? Uh, he's a banker for me. He brings by far the strongest form into the race. And I actually had a bet on him last time out. And he ran a good race, but he was a little bit disappointing. But the Golding's going to do the trick. Change of stable, good draw, everything's in his favour. Okay, from there, can we follow through, Darren, with this horse, Royal Wolf of Eddie Glades at 9 to 10? Yes, a very hard horse to beat. Uh, last time out, he was a little bit disappointing when he only won by a neck. I expected a bigger win from him that day, but I like that they dropped him back to the 1,200 metres and uh, freshened him up a little bit. From a one draw, I think he's going to take a power of beating. Okay, your top take, Daryl? Yeah, I'm also in favour of them bringing him back in trip. Um, my only question mark is whether he's better up the straight or around the bend or equal, but um, it was heavy weather for him last time out. So for that reason, I've opted to back him up with down to zero, who actually gave Vaz Vicky a fright over this course and distance uh, in the past. So there's no doubt Royal Wolf is the one to beat.
but uh, we backed him up with down to zero. Down to zero is what price? 12 to one. 12 to one, down to zero, not to be left out if you're looking for backup jackpots, etc. Let's go to the sixth race on the card, Reunion. Uh, it's Daryl Marie stay with you, Paul Peter Yard here, even money, Reunion, um, coming back to himself. Yeah, um, Clark, just the, <coughs> I'm not too sure how the track is going to be running, but like I say, said, very fast. I tell me very fast. Me. I don't know if that's going to suit him because I, I do believe they're going to give him a chance from a wide draw once again because he ran a cracker last time. I, he improved with those tactics and he never picked up a penalty. Um, so there's no doubt he's the one to beat, but Great Warrior is going to be up there in front, he possibly could, could steal a march, and he's a big, strong galloper. But if Reunion, if things go his way and um, the track's not too quick for him, I'm expecting him to run Great Warrior down in the latter stages. Okay, Jose made a good one of the other day too. Uh, he had Muzi on on that stage. Muzi's riding the horse uh, Alvo's Prince, but um, he's got uh, Joe's got some hunger on Great Warrior. Reunion, they always rated pretty highly. Darren, uh, how do you see it? Yes, I believe they've gotten to the bottom of Reunion's problems. Um, it was an encouraging last run. He was flying up late. It actually looked like he was going to go on by. But um, I think he's better than his rating suggests of 85. And I think he'll take a lot of beating. So even money shot. So you like those favorite. I can see you're a favorite man for Sunday, which uh, takes us to the final leg of the jackpot. Yeah, Daryl Marie, you deserve it. 22 to 10. Sentence is at 5 to 2, the second choice. And then 33 to 10 about uh, last cheer. Is it open? Uh, Clark, I don't know if you can scroll down, but whoever's at the bottom of the of the, the betting, that's the one we'll be shouting on with one field. No, oh, you've gone the whole field. Okay. I can't scroll down, unfortunately. So it's a field race, right? A whole lot. Yeah, we 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 will be shouting on the biggest rope in the in the bunch. And Darren, I'm assuming you're on the same page. Yes, yeah, so I haven't got an outright first selection and we will be shouting the biggest outsider. And you, what are you going to say about the last leg? You're doing the same thing? The eighth race? Yes, definitely. We are doing the same <laughs> thing. We're going the field. But my first choice is Iris Willer. Uh, she stayed on from a long way back last time and she got going late. And the 2,000 metre trip, I think it'll suit her now from a one draw. So that's where the value lies. Okay, that's interesting to know. Daryl Marie keeps telling me he hasn't got V Moodley's budget. Meantime, he's gone field, field, field. <laughs> yeah, Clark, but we've, you must remember that we've banked Arm L and we've gone short with in two other legs with only two horses. So we can afford to play wide in the, in the last two legs. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, so that's a look at the play. Looks like it's interesting play on the weekend. Um, hopefully you guys have got it all together for us. I'm going to take us through now. Uh, what you guys have put together uh, for us in terms of what you like as well. So everybody can start working out their bets now. We'll start off with the Hollywood Bet Scottsville uh, bar pot for the Saturday 19 June meeting. Um, that's, those are the bar pot numbers I've got from you guys, which works out to 240 Rand. Um, have, have I got it in the correct order? Banker 2, 5, 8, 10. Darren, you can just double check it. 2, 5, 7, 8, 12. Three, four, five, twelve, one, two, six, ten, and banker nine at the back. That's correct. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, we'll go from there to this big uh, Hollywood bet Scottsville pick six now, which is a four hundred and eleven rand ten percent perm, as I've got it. Um, as far as the pick six is concerned, and it, it, it all hinges around your fourth leg, yeah, guys. Is that correct? That's yeah, correct. that's the banker's tango. Yeah, that's all. So it's all about Chitenga, hard to beat. She gets through there, hopefully. Then uh, it's just a match to survive in the last leg, which you seem fairly confident. That's a perm. If you invest 411 Rand, you're more than likely going to get your money back, no doubt. You'll get results. It's not an easy card. The Turfentine Sunday meeting, we put the bar pots and the pick six together. So if I may, uh, the bar pot that you guys that have got up there, and I've put it up in there for 80 bucks. That's what you've worked it out for. Uh, three and five by one, two, eight, ten, twelve, by one and five, by banker one, by four and seven, by four and six. Um, that's the bar pot turpentine Sunday, uh, the 20th of June. And then that pick six is incorrect, Clyde. Oh, is the pick six not right? Okay, what have we got here? What yeah. should the pick six be? I, I don't have uh, 
the numbers in front of me. I don't okay. know if Darren's I'll, I'll number. read out the numbers. Okay. It's field. Right. No, it's one. not. It's not field. Uh, we put forces. Oh, it's one, two, three, and five. Okay. Well, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and amend it if I can on 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 air whilst we okay. whilst we're busy with it. If it if that is the case. So you say it's one. One, two, three, and five. Right. By one. Yes. By four and seven. By four and seven. By four and six. Uh, by four and six. By field, by field. By field, by field. Okay. And what does that come to, guys? What does that cost? Oh, I didn't see the full amount. Have you got the calculated? I know... Um, you want to, if you guys got the book, you can work it out quickly. We just update it for our viewers. So we're going first leg one, two, three, five, which is four runners by banker, by four and seven, which is two runners, that's eight, uh, by two runners, four and six is 16, by the two fields at the back. What are the two fields at the back? 11 by 11. So let's work that out uh, quickly. So we're going 16, am I correct? Times 11 times 11. Is that 1936? Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. 1936. That's what the pick six works out to as far as um, the turfentine meeting is concerned. Happy with it now, uh, Daryl? That's, yeah, that's good. All good now, Clyde. I'm All happy. Good. Okay, good. From there, um, Darren, tell us what's happening on the weekend. Okay, so I'm very strong. Haston Manana in the second race. He brings very solid form into the race. And 8 to 10 looks a good price. Chitengo, 15 to 10. Um, I couldn't find any dangers there. And on Sunday, the two favourites, Royal Wolf and Reunion. You can always throw in I'm Al as a treble horse, but that's me for the weekend. Excellent. All right, to talk to um, Daryl. Let's go to Daryl. What's your play of the day? Yeah, Clyde. I'm rubber stamping Hastamanyana. Uh, at 8 to 10, I, I think he'll start half those odds. Um, mm -hmm. Brings the strongest form into the race. That's a very good price. If you can get some 8 to 10, take it now. You'll be smiling come race time. And then my value bet is Traveling Lights. Uh, I've seen some 10 to 1 on offer. She represents the value in the race. And each way play with that current rating, she's going to be very competitive. Okay, that's a good price. 215 Sunday, nothing for Father's Day, no presents. Um, we'll, we'll begin with Darren on Sunday. <laughs> okay. okay, nothing wrong with that. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much again for your time. Join us every Friday night to watch uh, Waiter to Win, where winning is everything. We hope that uh, it's all worked out or will work out in your favor. And we trust that you're all going to have a very good weekend as well uh, with us as far as um, the tips are concerned. Thank you so much, all of you. Darren, thank you for studying and putting your time in. Thank Happy you. Father's Day to you with all you and your wonderful children. And to Daryl, happy Father's Day to you and all your wonderful children. Everything of the best and hope everything goes well. Likewise. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.